Hey everybody, it's Peter from the Kia Hyundai channel. Today we're gonna to talk about the 2022 Kia Stinger GT Limited, which we've done a lot in the past. Uh, so those of you who don't know me, uh, when the Stinger first came out, like the very first Stinger first came out, I got invited to California to do a professional film shoot for Kia Motors USA. And uh, we did some film shoots for YouTube on that car then. I've taken this car to the racetrack a number of times uh, with Kia Canada events. And uh, I followed this car pretty closely throughout its whole lifespan. And now we might be coming to near the end. We'll talk about that in this video as well. But basically what this video is gonna be is a complete in-depth review of a car that I absolutely love and just probably don't talk about it enough. So we're gonna go through all the little details. If you have questions, of course we do these things live and you can ask me questions while, you're, um, while we're doing it. If you are not live with us and you just want the content, if you want, you can skip ahead to the three minute mark of this video, which is where we'll have the content. In the meantime, if you wanna learn how to join us live, I'm gonna show you how to do that now. We'll talk about some news and some notes and We'll dive in uh, right now. So let's do that. Here's how you join us live. You go to our YouTube page, and normally we just have sort of a bumper video up here that just does its thing. And if you refresh the page exactly at two o'clock Eastern time, which is what we're doing right now, you're gonna see that the live video takes over that spot. So we're gonna click into that. As we do that, you're gonna watch a quick little ad. I'm gonna make sure my computer is muted, which it is now. And I'm gonna skip the ad. While we're watching that ad, I just wanna say real quickly, if you're looking for a car in Ontario, connect with me. There'll be a link in this description after the video and you can connect with us uh, anywhere in Ontario if you're looking to buy a car. Uh, we wanna be able to help you out. We've had people from all over the place. I had people from Durham call me this morning. I had people from other times. Uh, we had people from out of town buying cars this weekend as well. If you are looking for a car, we wanna earn your business. We do that with these videos. We do that with a whole bunch of stuff. So there we go. Uh, ooh, somebody asked me a question. I just missed that there. So we'll get into that question in a second. If you're a regular with us, make sure you hit that like button. Uh, usually we just uh, don't get a lot of regulars liking the button early. So hit the like button early on the video. That'll help us get a bunch of people on and uh, obviously it helps our channel. Uh, okay, let's talk news and notes. And <coughs> first of all, Oh boy. Uh, my boss is at Kia meetings right now. So if there's anything going on that he can share with us, he will let us know this week. So there could be some news coming up this week. Uh, we had some Kia Hyundai classes doing really well over the weekend. So those, um, uh, those are Kia Hyundai classes. They're just little two to four minute videos, two to six minute videos. Usually sometimes there are a couple of them are a little bit longer. Uh, a lot of people like those. So make sure you check those out if you haven't seen them. Uh, N model. Somebody was asking about the N model earlier today. We know that the N models have not yet been priced in Canada, but uh, when they will be, when they are priced, we'll let you know. That's the uh, Elantra and the Kona. Of course, the Veloster N is already priced. And somebody says Kia Carnival where? Uh, I don't know what that means, other than Kia Carnival is here, and um, the rest of them are shipping, I guess. <laughs> Uh, is the Kia Stinger discontinued after 2022? We'll talk about that in this video, and we are already at the three minute mark, so let's get going. Hey everybody, it's Peter from the Kia Hyundai channel. This is going to be a review of this car behind me, and we'll start with a question that was just asked to me just now, and do me a favor, if you haven't hit the like button yet, hit the like button, and we'll get rolling through. First question that was asked to me is, is the Kia Stinger going to be discontinued after this year? Short answer, no. And I say that confidently. Uh, I expect in Canada, there will be a 2023 model year Kia Stinger. Now that does not mean that the world will have a 2023 Kia Stinger. Uh, if you look at things like the Kia Sportage or as the Americans say, Sportage, it's gonna be introduced here in the spring or early, maybe even earlier than that as a 2023 model in North America, but it may be 22 models elsewhere. So while the Stinger, I believe, is coming to an end, and I've said that long for a long, long time now, uh, I don't think that this is the final Canadian model year where we film. There will probably, or there will be, a one more model year, 2023 model year. Now, whether that runs a full production year or not, we don't know. And uh, the next question people are going to ask is, is the EV6 going to be the replacement for this car? Maybe, kind of, not really. Um, the EV6, now that I've seen it in person, is not a direct replacement for this car. The EV6 will, especially in the GT version that could come out later with 500 plus horsepower, will be an absolute performance car, but it is not going to be a replacement for this car. This is a unique car, and that's part of why we're talking about it together. So. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna dig right into the specs right now. We're gonna stop at a few points for some questions. So if you've already asked some questions, I'll try to get back to them in a minute. Um, but let's just dig in. I think that's what people wanna see. So there we go. Stinger is a halo of Kia and that made a statement. We are serious players. Uh, the Stinger is a halo car. The EV6 is really the future. Let's be honest, guys. These guys, we went to the LA Auto Show last month. These guys are focused on the environmental impact of various cars. There will not be a performance car in a, like let's say a V8 engine in the future from Kia. They are going electric and that is 
going to be how things go. Here's the key fob. Now, those of you who have seen a Kia Stinger previous to the 2022 model year are going to know that you used to have sort of a round button up here. looked pretty cool and almost a leather-like look to the key fob. This one is plasticky. And it has, it's actually the same key as we use in all of our other cars. So interesting that they moved away from that. To be fair, all of these other cars basically copied the Stinger design. But the Stinger used to have a round button here. It doesn't anymore. But it does add this button right there, which is, I think, what you guys all want to see. That is remote start on the key fob. So there is remote start on the key fob. There is also a remote start through the what used to be known as Uvo Intelligence app and is now Kia Connect, which is confusing because Uvo Intelligence is still in the car, but Kia Connect is the way you get the app on the cell phone. That is the same system. They renamed the app, but they haven't renamed it in the car, so that can be, in the short term, a little bit confusing. All right, let's take a look at this just really briefly on the outside. Kia Stinger, let's compare it to the N models from uh, Hyundai. This is a performance car. And it is a true GT car. A GT car, by definition, when they came up with the GT, the Gran Turismo name, Gran Touring name, was a performance car meant for the streets. You could whip from one part of Europe to the other part of Europe on the streets, probably illegally, at speed. You could handle very well, um, certainly capable on the track, but not designed to be a, uh, a track car. This is designed to be a performance car that can go through the entire, um, you know, highway system as well as hit the track. An N model car is really designed with a track in mind and comfort is not a massive priority. So they are very different ways of getting to performance cars, but they're designed by some of the same people, some of the same influences. Uh, Albert Bierman would be the first one that I would think of, uh, the former head of BMW's M division for the powertrain and um, uh, handling. He was in charge of it with this car. He's also quite involved in the N model cars. Uh, I actually saw him at the LA Auto Show, I believe. I saw his seat anyways. I think I, he was there. It was a seat with his name labeled on it there. Anyway, so they are very different performance cars. And I think that really sort of shows a difference. Some people would say this is maybe the more mature car. And I think that's probably an accurate statement. Not saying that you have to be mature to own this, but a car that is a little well more sorted, um, that's going to be comfortable for your grandmother, as well as fun on the track. Whereas an N model car is all about performance and giggles. It's got NGS on the system. <laughs> that is a performance uh, button there. N grin shift, grin like smiling. Uh, so that is the difference there. It's all about giggles and grins on the N, whereas this one is a little bit more sophisticated in its ride and sacrifices just maybe a hair of potential on the track, which of course you've seen people lower these cars down, you've seen people add performance, and that would make some sense if it was primarily a track car. Uh, very much a performance car. There are some upgrades for 2022. Lighting, which we'll look at later. The exhaust is a little bit larger here. The outlet's there, the, visually they're larger. Um, very round, uh, or very large uh, round, uh, sort of display things there. If we look a little closer, you can see the actual exhaust is inside there. It's not quite as large. It is a little bit more uh, noisy exhaust in the good way, uh, and it has three more horsepower than it used to have in the past. The wheels have changed as well. They are still 19 inch, they are still staggered. So the rear wheels are wider than the front wheels. So you um, have that performance type uh, stagger to them, but they are 19 inch and this is a new uh, wheel design for 2022. You will also notice that the Scorpion edition has a different style wheel, but it's the exact same size of wheel. So different wheel there. Brembo brakes in the past and little things like functional vents here. These uh, will take the air off the wheel so they can, the air does come through a front, uh, area right there into there, which can cause um, cooling of the brakes and then it exhausts out there. The non-functional vents are right here. People get upset about those, but apparently the styling is just, it looks like something's missing without them. So let's dive in and take a look inside the car. This is the GT Limited. Now the GT Limited in Canada, keep in mind we are filming in Canada. Things are a little different in Canada than in other parts of the world. So the GT Limited in Canada used to be the top of the line. It's now actually the bottom of the line. Uh, so they took away a couple things. Like there's no heads up display in this car. Now there's just a few little things that are kind of moved away. Some of the seats, the way the seat used to have, um, a little section on this button here that would pinch the side bolsters together. Uh, you don't have that in the GT Limited anymore. That's only in the GT Elite or the Scorpion. So they, while they've taken those out, they've also added a number of things like the up-to-date safety features and the 10 and a quarter inch screen that you'll see right over here. Uh, you can see the ambient lighting is still here. Actually, shows it really well on camera right now. Um, sort of the red through there. So we're going to turn the car to the on position. 
I don't know if you saw that, but the steering wheel was lowering there because it is a powered steering wheel, so you can really customize that. Oh yeah, low tire pressure. I was gonna get that fixed. This car is about to, uh, to be swapped into winter tires, and uh, you can see what happens if you have low tire pressure. Now, of course, if I was to drive, it would tell me the exact PSI, so that or whatever I want, kilopascal, whatever you want. Uh, you can see what happens if there's a tire pressure, and that's going to be interfering with us today because it is um, a warning message that will be there. So ignore some of these lights that are on. I was going to get that fixed, but at least it shows you how it works. Uh, right here, Newton meters is how you're going to measure the torque, but we're going to switch that to um, pounds feet later because that's how we measure stuff here in Canada still, I think, for most of us. And of course, you have these extra little gauges in there. You didn't have that in the 2021 and previous model year vehicles. And like I mentioned, this screen is new, and so is that ambient lighting, which is kind of cool. So let's just show you a couple things in the ambient lighting. One thing before we get going too far, this guest mode. So you have guest and you have driver one and driver two. Um, oops, if I hit, I'm looking through the screen. I'm looking through my camera to hit the buttons and that's not a good way to do things. Uh, obviously Dave was driving this car in the past, but I'm gonna keep it on guest here. Um, if you switch the user modes here, you can see you can customize the name, customize the picture within uh, the choices that you have. That is a kind of good feature to have in 2022 with our cars because these cars are a lot like cell phones. If you ever had to share a cell phone with someone, it would just be weird and awkward to do that. And there's so many functions and features in here, not just things like radio presets and everything else, which you can customize per user, but even things like uh, driver safety settings that you can customize. So I do encourage you, if you're the kind of person who likes to customize your car just for you, when you're sharing the car, have the other person set uh, that uh, user mode up to the guest mode or driver two or whatever it is, um, because then you can really customize the car, make it yours, and um, that'll make sense in a second here. So let's just swip across. Uh, let's take a look at some of the things you can do. I always like showing this uh, HD radio data. I don't know if it'll work because this car's been inside most of the day. Yep, no information. We are inside. But you do have a, a Doppler radar map in here that can show up of the area. Uh, Sounds of Nature is my least favorite feature, but it is pretty cool in here. And you know what? I'll just show it to you. While it's my least favorite feature, let's just show it to you. Right now, I'm gonna turn the radio up. There's a lively forest around me, so you can hear birds chirping and other things, calm sea waves, which is fun, rainy day, open air cafe. Um, my favorite here is a snowy village because I don't know anybody who wants to hear snow crunching in your car. What I love about this though, is as you wait for the sounds to develop, there's snow crunching around, there's like a dog barking and stuff, and you can hear things in different areas around the car sometimes, which is kind of cool. Oh, there we go. So there's some noises going around the car now. It is just weird that someone would want to listen to this in a car, and I'm going to do a video on it because I think it's absolutely ridiculous, but it has that feature, and to be fair, when you sit and listen to it long enough, it kind of sends the noises all around, and I guess it's cool, but it's so stupid. Anyways, um, so you can tell me I'm wrong and that it's cool and that's cool. But yeah, there's just so many features in here. Um, and again, we're just going to stop that. We're going to make sure we turn the radio on um, because I want to make sure that um, we have somebody. Okay, there's music there. So anyways, we don't want that to turn on to um, to the radio. Uh, while we're here, take a quick look there. There's your radio. That's what it looks like. You can see satellite radio presets. You can see that little record button there uh, on each one of the satellite presets. So what that does is... From the time I've turned on the car, um, let's it'll record the, that satellite station. So if you have the top six uh, satellite presets, it'll record what has been playing there. So if you just missed your favorite song or just missed a favorite playlist or something like that on satellite radio, you can go back to um, some of these stations. So we'll go, we'll show you what I'm talking about. So we're on pop hits here, uh, number two. So right now we're live, but we're gonna go back and we're gonna skip ahead till when I started to um oh, let's see if i can go back oh we don't have any signal because we're indoors so that doesn't work but the idea is you could skip back up to a half an hour so it records about a half an hour of music so basically from you started the car it starts recording on your six top satellite presets and it allows you to re-listen to up to the past half an hour of um, music that was there so it's kind of a cool feature on the radio there as you know off the, the screen you can pull in different things on the side here so a lot of people like to have the radio up here and the uh, satellite up there or if you want to switch it around and have the map on the one side you can do the map on one side the radio on the other but of course anything in this menu you can swipe through so you can see different types of things depending on how you have it set up and what you allow to be in here 
um, you can just swipe through different uh, features there. So of course the map would be more like daylight color um, or brighter side if, it, if the car thought we were outside, but it senses that it's dark in here and it is dark in here. So that's why that. So let's just take a look at a couple of the cool things in here. Uh, if we go to the settings here, oops, there we go. I gotta not look through my camera here. We'll go to the vehicle settings. This is the kind of stuff that you set up that really customizes the vehicle for you. So the driver assistance settings, smart cruise control reaction. Um, you can set that for fast, normal, slow. Driving convenience, there's a lot of features. Highway drive assist, auto speed change. These are the sort of navigation-based um, driver assistance type things. Warning timings and volumes. Uh, is an active assist, which means it's gonna actively break the car if it sees something in front of you. Lane safety, same idea here. There's an assist thing. Anything with an assist is capable of steering or braking the car to avoid. So what I want you to think of this is, um, with a car, let's say blind spot safety. Let's go blind spot is set to active assist. Let me just show you right here. Blind spot is set to the active assist. If it was warning only, it would just beep when someone was in your mirror or someone was in your blind spot. With the active assist setting the way it is, um, what you've actually done is the car is capable of breaking the front right wheel in this case. So you're steering out this way and breaking that wheel. It'll actually pull you back in line a little bit. So anything with an active assist is capable of steering or braking the car to help avoid a collision. And uh, that's why if you buy the car, you want to keep some of those active safety assists on. Uh, parking safety, you do have uh, rear cross traffic safety. And there's camera settings here as well. Rear view, parking guidance. Uh, you can turn some of those things, basically the parking lines on. I can't show you the parking lines right now, but I can show you the backup camera. If I just press this button, because it's a digital shifter. Oh, it does show the backup cameras. There you go. Because it's a digital shifter, um, it does uh, not let us go into reverse uh, or electronic shifter. It doesn't let us go into reverse while, we're, while the car is not running. Again, the GT Limited used to have a 360 camera. Now the GT Limited just has the backup camera and you have to go to the GT Elite or the Scorpion Edition to get that 360 camera. So perfectly good backup camera here, but on this particular model, you don't have the 360 camera. And again, if you want a Stinger and you're all about performance, I don't know that you need to go to the GT Elite. You're adding luxuries, but no more performance there. Um, and this one, is, it works quite fine the way it is. So let's turn that off. So a lot of stuff in here that you can switch through. And again, this 10 and a quarter inch screen is really good. The active sound I want to talk about here. Um, a lot of people think this is controversial, but again, as we move to an electric car future, um, this car does use the speaker system to give you more sound if you want. Now, I want to explain kind of how that works. There's an off button here. So if you don't want your car to make fake sounds, you can turn it off. What I will argue though is, I think you want to keep it on. And the reason is because this car has sound insulation. And if you know anything about sound insulation, sound insulation takes out different frequencies at different levels. It doesn't just turn the volume down on everything. Uh, if you've ever worn like earplugs, earplugs can take out certain frequencies more. So what it does is it, a lot of the sound insulation, for instance, and I don't know the exact frequencies, but let's say it takes out the bass uh, sound or it takes out the high frequencies, those kind of things. Um, what the active sound design actually does is kind of fill in what's missing. It's not so much a fake sound as much as just filling in what's missing. The car still makes a pretty cool sound outside, but it allows you to bring that inside uh, by sort of bringing back some of the sound that that sound insulation misses. So it's kind of a cool feature. And again, if you don't like it, don't complain to me in the comments. You can turn it off. Uh, but I do think it's um, nice to have. And I want to be clear, this is on a lot of cars. I think Mustangs have it. Uh, actually, I know Mustangs have it. So a lot of cars, I'm sure the Camaro probably has it. A lot of performance cars have this now. Uh, it's not uncommon. And uh, it is something that is in this car. So there was that. Uh, let's just take a look down here. Typical buttons here, uh, you can just see that all these are basically redundant buttons here. You can set up all these, uh, oh, set up, hey, look at that, see that? I'm reading the word and it just came to mind. You can set up these buttons to um, do something that you want it to do, or you can just touch the screen for the most part. The one button I do like to use is this one. You can set this up as a custom button. So I just pressed it. Um, the way it's uh, most of us set it up is to use your Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. It will bring that to the forefront. So it looks like this button's already been set up like that. We'll touch that and it says, hey, your stuff's not connected. Therefore, I can't pull that up. But you can set that up again if you wanted it um, in this button section, which is probably right over, oops, where is it? Uh, maybe in the setup and then the button. So there's the button there. So we can customize it right now. It's currently set to phone production. You can bring up Uvo. You can turn the display on and off, HD radio data. Uh, so you can pull up any one of these things, phone, Bluetooth audio home, uh, those kind of things. And there's also a steering wheel button, which you can set up for privacy mode, voice memos, reroute, cancel route, uh, none of the above, change hands-free calling device. So if you have two phones paired, maybe you have two work phones, you can switch between them by just tapping 
And actually, that's a good thing if you're in business. If you're in business and you want to switch between your work phone and your home phone on the Bluetooth, you can just tap that there and it will switch between and then you can um, use that. So again, you can kind of set it up for anything. I have it just for reject and end call on my personal car. And that's because this button here used to be pick up here and end call there. And I just got so used to doing that. That's the way I have it set up there. Uh, but you can customize that. So just some cool things in there just to make the car a little different. And again, I just want to be clear for those of you that are watching, we're going to go take your questions in a second. I'm trying to show you the stuff that the other uh, videos don't show you. So that's part of why we're going through some of this in-depth weird stuff. Uh, I've done other videos on this car to do other things. So if this isn't what your cup of tea is, there's other videos there for you, but hopefully it is. Going to take your questions. Actually, why don't we just do that right now? The light turned off. Just want to show you here the extra large panoramic roof. Uh, it's not quite panoramic because there's no second panel, but it feels like a panoramic roof because it is a very, very large panel above you. It doesn't look large on camera, but it's much larger than the regular one. Let's go turn the lights on outside. We got 72 people on. We got 51 likes, and I do appreciate your likes. Let's see if we can get to, let's set a low goal of 75 likes today. There'll be three, four, five hundred 500 people on this video. So uh, do me a favor, guys. Hit that like button. Let's see if we can get it to go, and we'll keep going through. I didn't talk about the memory seats, but this car still has memory seats. I'll show you them right now. They're in the door right there. And everything about this car, even though this is sort of the entry level stinger for us here in Canada, this is a very luxurious car. You still have soft touch everywhere, um, soft touch with leather type there. Even the top here, again, soft touch rubber, rubbery type feeling there. So uh, lots of stuff. All right, so where are we headed? We're gonna take your questions right now. We're gonna go uh, look at the lighting, look at the rear seat trunk space. We'll throw Teddy Bear in there. We'll talk about the EV6 trunk space compared to this because people are asking about that. And uh, yeah, we'll keep going through. So here's the thing. When I set the camera down like this and I do questions, there are people that are upset with me because I'm looking at me. I think it's logical in the question section to look at me, but other people are saying I should look at the car. So let me know if you should be looking at the car or looking at me during the questions because I'm not gonna move the camera around and I just feel like that kind of turns it off. So, so I said, turn off the fake sound of my GV70. Last thing I care about is the noise the engine makes real or not. So there you go, um, there we go. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna flip the camera around to me for now and you guys can tell me you don't wanna see me. It just feels awkward to be talking to a blank screen. Uh, what date was this video? You are live with me right now. I am, it is Monday, December 6th at 2.21 p.m. So if you're watching right now, Derek, uh, we're doing this right now. <laughs> okay, um, my sound setting resets every time I turn the car off. Any ideas? Oh, I don't know about it. I didn't know it did that. I thought it stays sort of where you had it. So that's new to me. Um, like the rain or the cafe snow, the crunching is weird. <laughs> Uh, so we're talking about the, the sounds of nature thing. There was a question very early on I want to try to find here. Does the stinger discontinue? We talked about that. Um, uh, any updates in regards to the wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay on Stinger? Yes. If you have a 10 and a quarter inch screen, you're not going to have wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. Don't blame me. I promised you I'd try to find out, and I did. Um, that's the short answer, is that if you have the 10 and a quarter inch screen, it will not be coming on cars that didn't the eight inch screens it came with, but on the Stinger, you're not gonna have it right now. So that sounds like you'll never have it on the Kia Stinger. Um, okay. Are there any restrictions to have the newer cars rust treated with things like Crown, especially with EV cars? Uh, I'm staying out of that only because I think there can be some issues with some of these rust control things, uh, like Crown rust control. I don't know specifically Crown as a brand, um, but I'm staying out of that in my videos because I don't wanna say, yes, it's fine, or no, it's not fine only to be proven wrong by whatever company or group or whoever has an interest in those kind of things. So I kind of stay out of that and let you guys decide that on your own um, because I don't want to make help you make decisions for you if, if I'm not qualified to do that. So rust control on an EV or these cars, um, I'm staying out of. There are better people to talk to than me about that. I just want to be clear on that. Do you know why the Canadian spec stingers don't have front parking sensors? Is there any way to have it installed by the dealer? Um, the front parking sensor, sensors in the Canadian Stinger. Uh, normally what happened is all of our stingers had a camera up front and therefore didn't have front parking sensors. In the US, I know you got them, but you didn't always have that 360 camera. Uh, that used to be this um, answer. I'm not aware of any way to put front parking sensors on there. I'm not sure if the computers are set up for that. So I can't promise that there is or is not a way. But like I said, a lot of them in the States, they had parking sensors instead of the camera. Whereas um, other than this trim line, we have the camera. So that's why they didn't do that. Um, 
All right, Kia with his algorithm decided USA don't need app for stinger control functions. I don't know. I, we have an app here that does a lot of control. So just so you know, the got app that they're talking about here, it's Kia Connect or um, Uvo Intelligence. It can do things like start the car, uh, turn on the heated seats, heated steering wheel, those kind of things. You can make sure the doors are locked. You can lock the cars from there, blink the lights, those kind of things. So we have that. I did a video on that about a week and a half ago, I guess. Um, so it's uh, Hyundai Blue Link and Kia Connect. Uh, it's that video there. You can find it. So we went over as many things as we could in that video. Uh, there we go. All right. Where's the 15 speakers? Eh, where is the 15 speaks is low K did? Oh, that's not English, man. I'm trying to help you, but I don't know. I think you asked where the 15 speakers are. To be honest, I don't know if I can count them all. Um, many of them are in the door. Like there's probably six. I think there's three speakers in each door. So three, six, there's 12 speakers in the doors right there. Uh, there'll be one in the center. There'll be a subwoofer in there somewhere. So I'm not sure where all the speakers are. And this one does have the Harman Kardon speakers in there. Um, uh, aftermarket, you can... Oh, for the parking sensors, aftermarket. Yeah, again, if you want to go aftermarket, I'm not, I'm not up to date on everything aftermarket uh, because that would be a long, a lot of research. Okay, so let's keep going through here. Uh, uh, okay, sorry, I just saw a comment come through. And how efficient is the eco mode in the Stinger? Oh, that's a great question. How efficient is the eco mode in the Stinger? Not at all. Uh, and I mean that seriously. Eco mode does not on its own give you good efficiency. What the eco mode does is if you're driving efficiently anyways, the eco mode will work with you. So pay attention to me for a second. I'll try to make that make sense. If you are light on the throttle and in sport mode, for instance, which is the entire opposite mode, it will keep you in a higher rev range because it wants to keep you in the power. If you are light on the throttle in eco mode, it will drop it down to the appropriate um, rev level and that is what saves you fuel. If you put it in eco mode and drive it with a lead foot, it might actually get worse mileage because it's, it's not gonna drive well because it's gonna resist the downshift, then you're gonna give it more gas to give it the power you want, and then it's gonna kick up it into like high, high revving to make up for the delayed response. So eco mode on its own, I mean, I guess it could save you fuel, but basically what you wanna do is if you're driving efficiently, you wanna put it in eco mode and that'll work with you to get good fuel efficiency. Same thing if you're on the track, you wanna put it in sport mode because you want it to keep the revs up, you want it to do those kind of things. So on its own, people think like, oh, I hit eco mode and it didn't save me any fuel. No, because you're still driving with a lead foot. If you drive it with a light foot, throw it in eco mode, it'll, you'll be perfectly happy with it. If you drive with like an average foot, leave it in normal mode, comfort mode, comfort mode, I guess it's on this one, and it'll be fine. If you drive with a lead foot, uh, sport mode's gonna make it react the right way for you. So, um, I, I mean, I shouldn't say it won't save you fuel, but it, it's not designed to on its own save you fuel. So, all right, let's take a look, uh, rear seat space. Rear seat space is pretty good here. Now, keep in mind, actually, I'm gonna adjust that because when I got out of this car, the seat came all the way back. I still fit there, but let's just show you what it's like with me sitting there um, oops, excuse my poor camera work here. All right, can I move the seat to where I need it? There we go. I'm moving the seat forward just a hair. So again, like I said, this car is set up when you turn the car off to bring the seat back. So we're just putting it to where I would have it comfortably to drive, which is right there. And then I'm gonna jump in the back seat and you're gonna see it is very difficult to get into a sports car in the back seat unless you have a Kia Stinger. Very simple to get back here. Now, is the headroom massive? No. Uh, if I had tall hair, I'd be in trouble, but I am six feet tall and I'm pretty comfortable back here. There's good angle on the seat here. So my seat legs are pretty well supported most of the way. Uh, not a ton of tow room. The seats are low up front, which is what you want in a sports car, but leg room is very, very good. I'm a six footer sitting behind myself. The key when they designed this car is they didn't want a ton of headroom. They wanted to keep the car low, but they did want a lot of width. And you definitely have the sense of width back here. It feels quite roomy back here. The passenger seat is set back way too far for the average human. Uh, just they were cleaning the car earlier. You have the pocket there. And again, you have good leg room there. Speakers we were talking about, there's one there, one there, and one there. And this is same thing in the front, uh, one, two, and three. So lots of speakers here. As we look in the back here, vents here, just like the front ones, they're on now, they were turned off. And I should point that out, any of these circular vents, you can turn it here and hear a click, that turns them off and it turns them back on. And of course you can adjust the temperature there. And there's two sockets down here, a 12 volt and a USB port down there. And uh, so again, comfort back here is very good for a sports car, pretty good overall. Um, you know, I would easily sit back here for a couple hours. The only issue I have, and this is like I said, is my toes fit under the seat here. But if I had work boots, they probably wouldn't. That seat is low to the floor. And again, 
for the most part, that's what you want. If you bought a crossover, you would have a raised seat because people want to sit tall. If you have a sports car, you want to sit low, keep that center of gravity low, have your hips kind of feel the car moving. If you drive on a racetrack, your hips are your center of gravity on your body. And the closer the you know car feels to your hips, uh, the more understanding you ha your body knows of what the car is doing. So that's why you have a low seat in a um, sports car. And this isn't that low. Like getting in and out of this car is not that hard, um, but you do want to have the you know, a little bit lower seat. So jumping out again, easy to do that. Let's pop the trunk for a second here. And we'll talk about this compared to the EV6 now that I've seen it uh, in person. Because again, the rumor is that this will be replaced by the EV6 eventually. Uh, I can see some similarities here. EV6 has a big hatchback. I would say the EV6 feels to me a little bit longer, but I don't know anymore. Now that I see it in person, they're gonna have similar size trunks uh, probably. Uh, we'll have to look at the actual spec when it comes out. I'm sure the specs are already there for the non-Canadian models, but uh, I haven't seen them. Teddy bear test. The only problem with this car and the teddy bear is because you have those large wheel wells, there is a rear wheel drive system. Teddy bear looks a little squished like this. So a little narrower through the wheel wells, but plenty of space back here uh, for he Teddy to stretch out on the backside. It's almost a two teddy bear trunk, probably one and a half for sure. Um, but where teddy bear is happier, he's kind of going like a little bit like this. He's got just pretty good space in there. So for a sports car, a ton of trunk space. For teddy bear himself, you can see there are a couple limitations here. This cargo cover is removable. And if it was to come down, actually we can just show you it coming down. When the trunk is shut, we'll just take it off the handle there. When the trunk is shut, it does come down like that. It does touch Teddy's tummy there, right? So he's squishing up a little bit there. So when the trunk is shut, it uh, covers that, but it is of course covering that up. So we'll put this back on the powered tailgate. Oh boy. Let's see if I can do this correctly. There we go. There's one over there and there's one over here. All right. So there's that. Um, but yeah, very good trunk space in there uh, for a sports car. And, uh, what I like about it is being the hatchback style body, I'm just putting Teddy back on the seat here, you do have the ability to load very large items. You can take that panel out, fold the seats down, and you can fit very large items, uh, even with the higher glass there. The glass actually does come quite a bit higher than this uh, cover there. So pretty good trunk space overall. And then of course it is power operated, just like your SUV. So you tap that, bring it down. You can see the signal lights were blinking there it comes down. The other cool thing you can do is you can pop the trunk from your key fob alone, or um, which is right here, or you can set this up. So with just approaching the car with the key fob in hand, I haven't got it turned on right now. You can stand at the back of the car. When you stand close to it, the signal lights will blink five times in three seconds and you'll hear beeping at the same time and the trunk can come up on its own. You don't have to touch the button or touch anything. A lot of people you just have to, on other cars, you have to wave your foot underneath the car. This one, you can just approach it with the proximity key. Let's quickly take a look at the exterior lighting and then we'll uh, get back to your questions and we'll wrap this video up. And uh, there we go, lights are on and I think we're good. We'll turn the signal light on as well. Okay, signal light on, you can see really nice bright, uh, it's hard to point out how bright this is, but that's very bright there, wraps around, kind of has a little bit more style than some of our cars with the just kind of like chunking up and chunking down there. Uh, it looks pretty cool. This looks black to me, but it is a dark chrome mirror. There we go. You can sort of see the dark chrome mirror um, there. Out front, lights are supposedly different. They look very similar to me. You have the daytime running light, which is the white lights along there, which come along there. LED signal lights, which we'll talk about in a second, and the nice blistering bright headlights, which are awesome. But the LEDs are pretty cool because even the side, they're just, um, they just don't film well, but they look super cool in person to get a kind of cool look there. So without the lights on, just like this. And again, those really bright, nice focus daytime or uh, headlights there, which I really quite like. Come along the backside, the lights are all new for 2022 on the back. So we'll show you here again, still have the marker light on the side here. And then again, that difference, we used to have kind of the, uh, not circular, but a kind of a more circular type look over here. Now we've got a single panel across the front there. And again, one of the very few cars we have with LED rear signal lights. The color is not transmitting perfectly on my camera uh, of these lights. They are definitely a better red than what you're seeing on the camera and a better amber than you're seeing on camera there. Uh, but very just nice looking, high quality lighting. And the reason you're gonna buy a Stinger, just before we wrap up and take your questions, you're buying it because it's passionate. And I will say the EV6, I have not driven that car. It's not going to be a Stinger replacement in the sense that it just fills everything the Stinger feels. Uh, fills. This is a unique car. 
um, the way power builds in this car is different than almost, you know, most gasoline vehicles. It is fun, it is strong, there's a dance to this on the track and when you're driving sort of athletically. The EV6 may develop handling like this in time, it may be handling like this right off the bat, uh, but there's a unique feeling to driving a car like this and um, I'm a big fan of EVs, I think they're fantastic, but there is absolutely a passion here beyond just the sound, uh, which again, people think, oh, EVs are, I'm gonna miss the sound of a gas engine for the passion. Uh, it's beyond the sound, there's a passion to driving this that makes this an absolute blast to drive, but again, a very mature uh, blast drive. It's fun, it's strong, it's fun, like it's fast, it's very good that way, unlike those end models, which are just giggly silly. Um, in the fun way. So I am going to miss this car if it goes away. We will, just so you're clear, we will expect it for a 2023 model year. Whether that's a complete model year or not, we'll have to see. Uh, but I don't expect it beyond that. So just a really fun car that will eventually be a collector's car. And overwhelmingly positive reviews on this from all the things. What's the powertrain? This is a twin turbo V6, 368 horsepower. Uh, oh, I forgot the torque off the top of my head. But yeah, um, 368 horsepower is three horsepower up on the uh, previous model year. So we're finishing, coming to the end here. While you're still on with us, let's see if we can get a few likes. We only got 71 likes. We were going for, I think, 75 or so. Uh, so let's uh, see if four or five more people have a few likes to give. We got about 80, 90 people on still. Had 100 or so until I said we were wrapping this video up. I am going to go through your questions really quickly here. I missed the beginning of the video, but wanted to know if the dual exhaust is functional or cosmetic. They are uh, functional. There's, they, they come out both ways. Um, do you think we'll see the 3.5 twin turbo come to the Stinger? Uh, what is this? No, 3.3. Sorry, this is 3.3. I don't think so. I think the Stinger is going to stay as is, and that'll be it. Um, yeah. Why is the Kia app a paid one? It is not as of now. Eventually, there will be a subscription fee on the Kia Connect, but it is not a paid app as of this time. Limited is the same as the GT US? Probably not. For Canada, the GT Limited kind of downgraded some features to 2028 and upgraded some features um, in it as well. So the GT Elite in Canada is really the upgraded feature of the former GT Limited in Canada. So a little bit different. Uh, someone says, is it a dual clutch eight speed? It is not, it's a traditional eight speed, but it is very quick shifting. Somebody said a six speed manual, please. Never gonna happen. If it hasn't happened by now, it won't happen. Would be cool though. Uh, so there is that. Okay, um, which mode would you recommend when it comes to driving through snow and sleet? I've heard comfort mode is the best as the drivetrain is 60, 40 front to back. Uh, yeah, comfort mode is good. Eco mode can help you prevent, um, isn't there a snow mode in this car? I thought there was, maybe there's not. Yeah, there's the custom mode. So the, the eco mode it dulls the throttle, which can be helpful. Comfort mode is good as well. Um, to be very honest, I don't think this car is bad in the snow in any way, as long as you put winter tires on. You put winter tires on, and I don't think you'll have to worry about the drive mode as all, at all. Uh, sport mode is going to be a touchy on the throttle, which will make it a little bit dance more. Uh, but I do recommend if you buy this car to drive it uh, in the winter, that you do get all season, or sorry, you replace these um, tires with... Um, with winter tires, because I think that uh, in the winter, it's perfectly fine with that. So um, somebody's question mark, and, I don't know what your and, Bill's writing and with three question marks, and I don't know what that means. Dual clutch be too heavy for this? I don't think dual clutch is all that heavy. I just think it's just different. They didn't have a dual clutch that could handle the power of this back then. When will Kia bring a sedan to India? I have no idea what they're doing for India. All wheel drive, yes, all Canadian cars are all wheel drive, so, um, when we're talking about the cars on this channel, the Stingers that we're talking about live, they are all all-wheel drive. Uh, so there's that. Uh, Hat 2018 Stinger, love the old taillights more than this one. Okay, so there we go. Uh, taillights were always controversial. Some people liked them, some people didn't, so they did make that change. Uh, I don't know if I like the old ones better or not. I think they're kind of equal to me, but I can see people who like one don't like the other because it is quite different for considering the same car. Uh, just bought 2019 Stinger, love it, and no remorses. Great car, handling a daily commuter. Any advice on... Uh, or tips and tricks for the first time owners. Any software updates done over the air dealer? So software updates at this point are still done through a dealer network. Uh, tips and enjoying it, just have fun with it. Um, enjoy it for what it is. It's such a unique car. Um, yeah, it depends on what you, how you wanna use it or what you wanna do with it. Um, I wouldn't take your own car to the track, but I've been on the track in it and it's pretty fun. Uh, so there's that. Uh, ground, clear, ground clearance at the oil filter cover. I have no idea. I didn't measure that. <laughs> uh, there is ground clearance numbers online, which will be accurate, but I don't know what the ground... There's a lot of the underneath this car is covered in plastic, so there's not like there's an oil filter hanging down. It's probably covered in plastic as well for aerodynamics. So, um, 
but yeah, I know I seem like I sometimes know a lot. I have no idea what the ground clearance is on a car like this. I only usually memorize ground clearances on cars that uh, traditionally would be taken off road and I don't do that on this car. So um, I want the car, but it's getting killed. I don't think you and I are on the same page. This is a fantastic car. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Really appreciate these videos. Helped me get into a Kia Niro EV. Cool. Thank you for watching with us. All right, I think that's all the questions I see. Am I missing anything else? Any more news about supply of cars? Yeah, there's none. <laughs> uh, supply of cars, everybody keeps telling us it will improve. Um, it's not great right now. My, I'm having trouble finding cars for videos, to be honest. Uh, here's the short of it. If you want to buy a car right now, you're going to have to order it. If you want to order a car, you can get basically what you want. There's going to be a wait. Sometimes that wait's going to seem like a really long time. Sometimes, frankly, it is going to be a really long time. What you want from a dealer is honesty. If someone says it's going to be three months, but it's actually going to be eight, they should be telling you it's eight months. Um, so let's just keep in mind that dealers are as frustrated as customers when it comes to some of these delays. Uh, it is what it is. It's People have told me, oh, it must be a terrible time to buy a car because I have to pay MSRP. Uh, at our dealers, yeah, you're generally paying MSRP. Uh, what you are doing, though, is getting what you want, and we also pay above uh, value for your trade. So if you have a trade, it's a great time to buy a car. That's why I bought a car this year. Um, if you have to wait, yeah, there's, there's that waiting thing. If you have a lease that you need to get out of, you need to act now. Uh, certain cars are going to be much less weight than others. Uh, we've talked about this a lot in the past for waiting for cars. You want to make sure that you have, um, a, the dealer doesn't know how long your car will take until they have a VIN number. Once they have a VIN number, it's either entered production or about to enter production. Um, and then they'll be able to calculate your wait time from production to, um, shipping, at compound and around the dealer. If they say they won't have a VIN number for four months, then that means it's four months before it hits production. And that's a guesstimate. Things can change. So I think we'll just leave it there, guys. We've kind of gone over our time by a lot here. Uh, we'll be back next week. I want to thank everyone for joining us. we got 97 people on right now, uh, 93 likes. It'd be really cool if we could hit 100 likes before I say goodbye, but I am going to say goodbye. Can we order a Scorpion? I believe you can still order them. We've delivered a whole bunch of them here. So we've got a few on order as well. But yeah, absolutely connect with us about a Scorpion if you want one. Uh, in Canada, anyways, I think they're still available. So um, there is that. And... Uh, Okay, yeah, I think that's about it. We'll leave it there. We're back tomorrow with some Hyundai product. I haven't decided what we're doing yet uh, tomorrow. So if you have a suggestion, feel free to let us know. But again, we're inventory limited. I'll do the best I can for you. Uh, somebody says Kia Stinker. They think they're being funny. Obviously, they've never driven one, and I'm sorry for you. You should drive one. You'll probably really enjoy it. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We'll talk to you again later.